In Bohmian mechanics, um, we talk about the wave function of the universe. Why so? I mean, it seems like a rather inaccessible object to me. Well, first of all, it is very natural to ask about the wave function of the universe. If one takes quantum mechanics seriously, then not just atoms and small systems, but also the whole universe has a wave function. The question of how this wave function looks like is a very interesting one. It brings together quantum mechanics and cosmology and also has to do with the nature of time. Many physicists have thought about what this wave function could look like, even though we have very little access to it. One example for an equation for the wave function of the universe is the Wheeler-DeWitt equation. In Bohmian mechanics, there's another reason why one talks about the wave function of the universe. Namely, in order to justify that you can apply Bohmian mechanics to small subsystems without taking into account what's going on in the rest of the universe, you need to use an analysis in which the wave function of the universe enters. That is because a priori, Bohmian mechanics is a theory about the whole universe. That is, all particles are guided by the wave function of the universe. The question now is, how and why can you apply this theory to small subsystems? Now I should elaborate a little bit more on this, since it is a very important point. Bohmian mechanics is in principle a fundamental theory, that is one whose basic laws apply to the whole universe. Of course it is not the final theory of our universe, but you could imagine a world that behaves according to that theory. All fundamental theories, like Newtonian mechanics, electromagnetism, general relativity, are all theories of the whole universe. In these theories, you can derive the behavior of subsystems. You cannot derive the behavior of small subsystems without, take, without talking about a bigger system that contains many of these small subsystems, that is, the whole universe. Now, in Newtonian mechanics, it's mostly easy to talk about small subsystems, like the Earth, a laboratory, or a stone I'm throwing. It's easy for several reasons. For instance, the gravitational force decreases with 1 over the distance squared. That is, it's, it gets very weak on large distances. Also, the galaxies around the Earth are distributed very homogeneously, so the net gravitational force on the Earth um, it mostly cancels out. That's why we can describe physics here on Earth without having to take into account, say, the gravitational force from the Andromeda galaxy. In fact, this works so well that one might forget that in principle Newtonian mechanics is indeed a theory about the whole universe. In quantum mechanics the issue becomes more subtle. And that's because you have entanglement. And entanglement is nothing that becomes in any way weaker at large distances. It's totally independent of the spatial distance. It's a property of the wave function. If you now start with the wave function of the universe, it is not immediately clear how to separate it into different parts that describe different small subsystems. This is of course also a problem in standard quantum mechanics. In Bohmian mechanics there is a simple solution we can easily define something called a conditional wave function. More or less, you simply use the fact that all particles outside of your subsystem have some definite position. In this way, you have a clear notion and justification of a wave function of a subsystem. For special physical situations, for example measurements, this wave function becomes an effective wave function. And that is one that can be handled without explicit reference to the rest of the universe. And these are the usual wave functions one uses in applications. So to summarize, a fundamental theory of nature is always about the whole universe and you have to use reasoning in order to, to apply such a theory to smaller subsystems. In principle it could be that in your theory it is not possible to describe the behavior of subsystems independent of the rest of the universe. This would be a very complicated theory then one that is hard to analyze and verify. For other theories, namely most theories we know so far, it is sometimes easy and sometimes hard to justify why we can apply them so successfully to subsystems, disregarding the rest of the universe. But this justification gives you more insight into what's going on, and Bohmian mechanics is a good example for that.